Welcome to Elephant Engineering Solutions YouTube channel. Today, we're going to have a short video talking about your AutoCAD files, how you name them, and how you organize them. If you work in a team environment, it's critical that everybody on the team uses the same system for storing and naming AutoCAD files. The drawing folder is where you save all of your CAD work. And in that drawing folder, we have five subfolders. We have the base folder, the plan folder, the exhibit folder, the draft folder, and the backup folder. And I'll get into each one of these folders and what they contain. The base drawings are your underlying CAD files that represent existing and proposed line work. If we go into the space folder, you have the site drawing, the utility drawing, surfaces, pipe networks, and a base drawing for your alignments. The naming format for these drawings is pretty simple. This represents the job number. But it's important to put the job number in front of the file in case one of these files accidentally gets moved into a different folder. And then the second field is just a simple description of what the file is. Now let's talk about the practice of using this folder. The base folder should only contain the most current version of a particular drawing. Now, the reason I say this is many times you'll be working on a project and you're saving drafts. You, you know, you're working on preliminary concepts, you're working on draft versions. Maybe you want to, you want to do a save as and, and monkey around with the design a little bit. That's fine but the base folder is not the place to do that. We'll get into where to save those drawings in a minute. The other thing is many times when you're working on a project, you'll have multiple plan sets within that project. So like for instance, let's say you're working on an apartment complex. You're probably gonna have an on-site set of plans. What you would do in that situation is you would make a folder within the base folder. You'd make another subfolder and we can call it something like on site plans. Okay. And then along with the same example apartment complex, let's say the owner is responsible for building the off site improvements. In many jurisdictions, they want the on site improvements separated from the off site improvements. So you would have two separate sets of plans. You would have the on site improvement plans, and then you would have the off site improvement plans. So we'd make another subfolder. And we call these the um, offsite plans. Now, in my practice, I have two separate base files for the on site plans and the off site plans. So I would have an on site base file for the on site utilities, and I would have an off site base file for the off site utilities. So now I'd, I would add a um, suffix on this plan or on this base file. And since this is the on-site utility drawing, I'm gonna call it um, on-site. I'm gonna copy this guy. And now this base file is the off-site, so I'm gonna call it um, utility off-site. So what we're doing is we're splitting up the proposed utility improvements between on-site and off-site. And you wanna be really careful when you're working in these base files that you don't have any overlap between the two scopes. So like you don't want offsite utilities bleeding into the onsite utilities. Okay, let's go into the plan folder. The plan drawings are your drawings that contain your sheet borders, your sheet notes, and all of the annotations for your design. So you would take your base drawings X reference them into the plan drawings, and you would basically use the plan drawings to annotate, label, and you will print from the plan drawing. So let's get into this folder real quick. You can see in this example, we have a cover sheet, notes, topo, demo, site, grade, storm, water and sewer, erosion control, and details. Um, the naming format for these plan sheets is you put the job number first, because as mentioned earlier, if one of these gets inadvertently moved, you want to be able to, to find it. 
And then the second field, it's a number indicating the position of that plan sheet in your plan set. So obviously the cover sheet comes first, the notes come second, the topo comes third, so on and so forth. Um, for me, this is just a nice way to to organize your, your drawings so you can find what you're looking for more easily. And then the third field is just a simple um, description of what the plan is. The plan folder should only contain the most current version of that drawing. And also, if you're working on a project that has multiple plan sets, create subfolders within the plan folder corresponding with each plan set. Let's go into the exhibit folder. What I consider to be an exhibit is something that is presentation level, like you're going to put your border on it. It's something that you're going to give to a governing agency or a client for a presentation, but it is not going to make its way into the construction drawings. So for each exhibit, I would recommend that you make a separate folder. The name format on these folders is the entity to whom you are sending the exhibit, the entity that is reviewing the exhibit, and then followed up by a short description of what the exhibit entails. So if we go into the example of this, um, the city fire department exhibit, the first field is the job number, and then a simple description of what it is that I'm trying to show. As I go through iterations on these exhibits, I do a save as of the exhibit, and then I, I put a date on the end. I know that the drawing file that does not have the date is the most current. Okay, let's go to the next folder, which is the draft. Now, you remember earlier when I was talking about the base folder and the plan folder, how those folders only contain the most current version of a particular drawing? Many times as you're iterating through a design, you might want to explore a particular option, but you don't necessarily want to commit to it. So what you would do, you would take your base file, do a save as into the draft folder, and you would have liberty to explore different options, different design ideas, and you can erase stuff as you want. You can add stuff as you want, and you're not going to have to, you know, you're not going to have to commit to it. So let's look at some examples. Um, you know, let's say you have a project and you have on that project, you have road A. You wanna explore some different options for the alignment of road A. So, you know, you, you take the site plan and you do a save as into the draft folder and you can start playing around with the alignment. So what I recommend is when you're gonna explore an option, you make a separate subfolder within the draft folder and just name the folder you know, something that reflects the nature of that design option. Okay, and finally, the last folder is what I'm calling the backup folder. The backup folder is going to be basically an archive of your design process. So at various milestones through the creation of the um, construction set, you wanna take a wholesale copy of your entire drawing folder and save it in the backup folder. Okay, so let's look at the backup folder here. What I recommend for the for the backup is every time you're gonna do a backup, create a new folder and put the date in the beginning so that these folders will line up chronologically. And then in the second field, put a brief description of the milestone associated with that backup. So like for instance, if we go into this 50% uh, progress set, you can see I've copied the base folder and I've copied the plan folder. It only takes 10 seconds to do, but if you do it regularly, when you do have some sort of an error, it's gonna save your bacon big time. It's just a good tool for, if needed, recreating your design process, your, your thought process, or if you have some sort of an error, or let's say a file gets corrupted, you have something to go back to. Okay, so that's it for my system. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you got something out of it. Please hit the subscribe button if you'd like to be notified as new videos become available. You can check out my website. It's www.elephant-eng.com. 
Thanks for watching and take care.